Idiopathic toe walking is a diagnosis that's frequently encountered by pediatric physical therapists, um, especially in the outpatient practice setting. And, uh, ba- you know, just based on personal experience, experience of my colleagues, and then also on some of the literature that's out there, this is a very a difficult and frustrating diagnosis for pediatric physical therapists. There is a lot of literature out there, uh, various varying degrees of quality, um, especially re- with regards to intervention. And I think at this time, we have very little structure around how to approach idiopathic toe walking and how to treat it most effectively. Right now, so you did the obvious thing, you turned to parents. Yes, we turned to parents. Well, first of all, we established that there was a need for um, improving care around this diagnosis. So we actually decided to work with the American Physical Therapy Association and uh, do a, a clinical practice guideline for it. But parents are key stakeholders, obviously, in the in the diagnosis and treatment of idiopathic toe walkers. So then, yes, we absolutely turn to parents to get their input to help drive it. So could you tell me how you got, how you went about getting the parent perspective? Yeah, so we um, developed a survey, and the survey included almost 50 items across multiple areas of practice from diagnosis, um, evaluation, treatment, prognosis, um, and all, all therapy care related to it, as well as some qualitative comment areas to allow parents to provide more detail. And we ended up having a really nice um, response from families. I think we had over 100 parents comp- or start the survey, and we had nearly 100 complete it. So we included, I think, about 98 parents and their results in, the, in this study. Can you tell me what came out of it? This is clearly a very complex issue, isn't it? But exactly, what did you find exactly. when you examined parent perspectives? So I think um, not too surprising, given what we do know and what we have experienced ourselves as therapists, there was a lot of variability in the parent reported data. Um, Some parents had reported quite excellent experiences with physical therapy. Other parents reported some concerns or challenges with physical therapy. Some parents um, reported concerns and challenges that are more or less outside the area of physical therapy, but maybe some of their care leading up to actually getting referred for services. So what sorts of themes floated to the top? Because I'm thinking of applying this clinically for the average physical therapist. Uh, It may not be at that stage yet, but what floated to the top? Sure. So, you know, one of the things is, first of all, we, we learned that therapists do some things really well And then there were other areas where there was greater variability and maybe some opportunities for improving care and for improving therapy interactions. So um, some of the things, you know, therapists were really great about doing the evaluations and also sharing the results of those evaluations with families and helping to use all that to develop plans of care. And parents also reported, a really high number of parents reported that therapists were really good about taking their personal and their child's goals and priorities into consideration when developing treatment plans. So I think, um, you know, really, really nice to see those as coming up as strengths and that parents are recognizing those. I think where we saw some more opportunities for maybe improvement along it is that in spite of everything, a lot of parents did not feel um, confident in that their physical therapist really was able to fully treat their child's toe walking. And I think we thought this was interesting, but I think it speaks some to the fact that we don't really have a great understanding of what causes toe walking and who should or should not be, is going to respond to physical therapy. Was there any clearer understanding about which technique above others is probably good to use or or is it still quite um, complex? No, it's very complex. What we did do is we surveyed parents to find out what level of importance they ascribe to different treatment interventions. A large number of parents really put a large um, amount of um, confidence in stretching and strengthening, which is interesting because that's not what the literature is showing us as the strongest interventions. I think in general, um, intervention literature for idiopathic toe walking is not very high quality, not very strong, but we do see that that serial casting for low load prolonged stretching um, seems to be more effective than maybe other more traditional physical therapy stretching. So interesting that parents had that a little bit, you know, still high up on their list, but a little bit lower. And I think that may be partly be the way we ask the questions and parents probably or may have responded based on what they received from therapy interventions versus 
you know, really being able to balance what was most effective. And I think one of the things that we did learn is that a large number of parents, um, only about, or about a third of families and parents interviewed or, or surveyed, I mean, reported that they did not feel necessarily educated about idiopathic toe walking and did not feel educated about all their treatment options. And I think these are definitely areas for improvement with with physical therapy care. Right. So what are the lessons then that clinical uh, that clinicians could use when looking at what you found so far? You, you presumably haven't got the guideline yet, but what are the lessons coming out of the work so far? Sure. Well, and I think, once again, our, our work really established that there is a need for a clinical practice guideline. When we have this much variability experienced by parents, I think it speaks to the fact that, yes, we probably need more education for physical therapists and more structured guidelines on how to treat idiopathic toe walking and how to approach it. So I think, um, first of all, for therapists is helping to pr translate that knowledge and that evidence to therapists so that the therapists feel confident in understanding toe walking and can help communicate that education to parents. And then learning that maybe we need some more family friendly educational resources to help them understand the diagnosis. I think another thing was certainly that families valued early intervention or at least early referral for physical therapy. And that's maybe outside of the realm of physical therapy so much, but I think physical therapists certainly can do a nice job of um, coordinating care with pediatricians in their local community and helping to educate community providers. You know, for, we're limited. We don't really understand or know when the best timing is for children to be treated, but a large number of parents did not feel that their child was referred at the appropriate time, and many um, suggested that they would have liked earlier referral. So I think physical therapy um, is, we, we saw was really the primary uh, referral source for a lot of these families, and often the primary treating provider for these families. So I think it's a great opportunity to get families in, to provide uh, education about toe walking, and then knowing that families really want to understand all their treatment options and what that could possibly look like. Right. Based on what you now know, uh, what's the really simple, short message that you would give physical therapists everywhere for how to deal with patients, how to do your best for them? Yeah, I, you know, I think one of the probably the biggest thing is collaborate, coordinate, partner with the family. I think, you know, parents know their kids best. And parents really want to be a part of the, the decision-making process around the care, around the timing of the referral, the timing that they start therapies, and the content of their, the interventions that their child receives. So I think really working with the family to make sure that they understand the diagnosis and that they get to be partners in the decision-making around treatment. Mary Beth, you are looking at uh, idiopathic toe walking. There has been an unmet need. I've got to ask you, first of all, your own personal approach. You have a patient with idiopathic toe walking. What have you been doing up until now? Well, I think we've been incorporating what we have known has worked in the past, which has actually been very variable. And that's one reason that I wanted to work on a clinical practice guideline is because I think this particular diagnosis can be very frustrating. Uh, children are idiopathic, who are idiopathic toe walkers habitually, it's very hard to change their gait pattern. So I have been able to do serial casting, stretching, uh, night splinting, um, motor control type of interventions. But if, if a child, uh, I've, I've found that this toe walking pattern tends to repeat itself again in the future. And that's why it can be very frustrating and that's why we decided to pursue a clinical practice guideline. Right. What was your favorite approach? I mean, if you have a patient coming in, would you tend to try one technique first? Well, if a child is tight, lacks range of motion, obviously serial casting is the first priority because serial casting is shown to increase range of motion. Uh, it may not be a permanent fix, but it kind of gives you your biggest bang for your buck. And it also, with the weight of the cast and the gait training that it provides with the heel down, I feel like that's 
been the best approach, but certainly it's not the only approach. And there are many different approaches that work with these children. Now, what about diagnostics? Because it's not completely settled, is it? How, how do you go about making an accurate diagnosis? Idiopathic toe walking is a diagnosis of exclusion. It's very common for kids when they're first learning to stand to go up on their toes, but they should be able to come down as well. Um, if kids are continuing to persist in toe walking by two years old and other conditions such as cerebral palsy, autism uh, are ruled out, then they, are, they can be diagnosed with idiopathic toe walking. And up to now, what would you say is the known facts about the natural history of this condition? That's a very good question. Uh, in the Ingstrom study, they did point out that there are a segment of the population of toe walkers that do resolve themselves over time. And I think, unfortunately, that word has is out, that there are kids that just naturally uh, stop toe walking, but there's also a segment of the population that doesn't, and those are the kids we tend to see in physical therapy. And for that reason, I think uh, parents sometimes get frustrated when they when their concerns are not taken seriously. And how anxious typically are parents, and how convinced are they that you, the physical therapist, know what you're doing? <laughs> well, that's why we did a parent survey, because we were not sure about that. We did a survey of, we wound up taking 98 completed surveys and analyzing the data and found out that physical therapy interventions tend to be variable, that the knowledge of physical therapists also varies. There's not a standardized approach. Um, even the research on this itself is somewhat variable with not a lot of, ta of um, you know, high, highly uh, high quality studies. And so we are trying to work on a clinical practice guideline to hopefully stream, streamline some of this intervention, diagnosis, that type of stuff. Right. Now, how close do you think you are to getting a clinical practice guideline now that you've uh, done a survey? And uh, you have got data from real patients or parents in the real world. Um, are you closer, do you think? Well, we are certainly in the weeds of it right now. We're in the midst of doing our critical appraisals of all the literature out there. And I would say we are probably about a third of the way done. Once we get the final appraisals all done, then we'll be able to start compiling the data and making recommendations based on the levels of evidence that we found in our critical appraisal process. Now, you haven't, of course, got the clinical guideline yet, but from the data that you've got so far, um, are there any points that you would actually say to a physical therapist that, that might help them to improve their therapy right from now, even before waiting for the guideline? Well, I think that really came out of our survey and that is how important it is to involve parents in communication and decision making. The big thing that came out of this that uh, is that physical therapists really do a good job of talking about the plan of care and going over the evaluation with the parents, but the areas they felt were lacking were kind of consensus in treatment and then also including parents and kids in decision making about the interventions that might be options for them. And can I ask you, Mary Beth, how you've changed your approach now that you're informed by your survey findings? Well, I think it's important to talk to parents about all the options and to highlight what we know in the evidence so far, what is effective. So, um, and we do know even a segment of the population that gets surgery, for example, that um, research has shown that about 28% of those kids still continue to toe walk after surgery. So I think it's just important to uh, be educated about what is out there as far as evidence and be able to bring up all the treatment options to the parents and um, involve them in the decision-making process. And I'm hoping that the clinical practice guideline no. that we develop will provide um, with, that we can put together family-friendly resources to help parents with decision-making algorithms that we could also provide in the future for these families. Now, it will be exciting when the clinical practice guideline is out. Uh,
from now, from today, uh, what's the take home message for physical therapists around the world then coming out of your very fascinating data on parent perspectives in idiopathic toe walking therapy? Well, I think not to feel alone in being frustrated by this diagnosis and that hopefully once we get this clinical pub, uh, practice guideline published that that physical therapists will hopefully have a better understanding of you know, diagnoses, uh, especially of our physical therapy diagnoses, um, about what causes toe walking, what is the natural history of toe walking, um, consistency and management of toe walking, um, earlier, the importance of earlier referrals, parents really highlighted that in this survey, improving parent education and involving them in shared decision making.